So in Uncharted's case, we have you know something that's billed as a Saturday morning pulp adventure comic, basically, or, or old timey you know Indiana Jones type adventure. And so there are limits to what we can do in terms of being super weird with the production. Um, but we did we did do some things that were different on this project. Um, we used a smaller string ensemble than we had in previous Uncharted's, and that was an idea Henry and I came up with talking about, you know, what could we do to give this project a little edge? And now for interactive and editing purposes, we do what's called striping when we record. So we have the whole orchestra in the room. Once they've worked through the queue uh, a time or two and we've made our notes and stuff, then we stripe it, and that means we take individual elements and have them play one at a time while the other players sit there. It sounds inefficient, but it, we actually go super fast doing that because we get to hear the cue in all its glory, but then we also get this really fine control in the mix and in editorial. So we might break things out like the short string passages and the long string passages, uh, low and high strings, the brass, you know, we, we might separate the melody so that if we're creating a loop of a piece, we don't have to play the melody every time you hear the loop, things like that. Um, this also allows us to do things like we did on this project, which is we had a 26-piece string section and I think 15 or 18 brass players. Now, if we recorded them all together, you'd never hear the strings. Uh, that's a lot of brass. So, um, but be because we were able to stripe it, we had this really cool, intimate string sound that was really edgy, and especially on the action stuff, they're a lot tighter. There's not so many of them, so you don't get that kind of swimmy vibe. So that was a big thing for us. Um, just real quickly, uh, just as an aside, this is um, the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare project scored by a phenomenal up-and-coming composer named Sarah Schachner, and she did like a synth hybrid thing. So her modular synths and things like that were part of her orchestra, basically. She also plays all the stringed instruments in the orchestra wonderfully, so she turned in a lot of mock-ups that were meant to be, excuse me, recorded by an orchestra with live parts already in there. And so we were augmenting that instead of replacing it. And her music was so bass heavy that I pitched this idea of basically putting the high strings in the back of the room, which they were super psyched about. <laughs> um, so we put all the violins in the very back of the room. But it was cool because even when we were striping and they were playing on their own, they were a lot further from the microphone tree at the conductor position, and it just gave us a different sound. They sounded distant, they sounded far away, they had more of like an effect, a textural effect base, and then we got great low end and stuff out of the celli, which were right there in front of the tree. Um, and it just, you know, I mean, to the extent that it kind of just messed with the players a little bit, I thought that was cool too. We just got different performances, they reacted differently. And um, we also had the principal in every part of the string section with a pickup on their instrument, which was another thing we had to talk them into. And um, we reamped a lot of the strings back at home. So that's our studio in the Bay Area, and we were running the violins through this Leslie cabinet um, on the right. So just, you know, interesting ways to make your score iconic. Back to Uncharted, um, we relied really heavily on soloists, especially ethnic instruments, which has always been a big thing of Uncharted. Um, Henry works with a brilliant percussionist named Satnam Ramgotra, and Satnam played all over this thing, and as you're gonna see in a minute, the percussion was a huge element in our implementation, and we needed a lot more percussion than the actual minutes of music we had in the game. So he had to layer extra percussion on every cue. So we worked with him a lot. We did, I don't know, eight or 10 days with him. And then the guy in the funny hat is uh, Henry's, one of his co-composers, Alex Belcher. He's a brilliant session guitarist. And Henry brought in guitar as an element to this score too, which was really cool. And then we had ethnic woodwinds, uh, like we do in all the Uncharted games, sprinkled on top. Um, this is just a summary of what we did. We recorded at Air Studios in London. We did a couple different sessions. Uh, we partnered with uh, legendary mixing engineer Alan Meyerson on the mixing. So he came in and worked with us uh, so that we could keep our world, as he calls it, um, within the confines of our uh, system in our office. So you know we have this whole pipeline where mixing is kind of part of the implementation pipeline and Alan really dug that and came in and worked with us. So he worked about four or five days 
co-mixing this with us, built us a template, and then handed it off to us, and then he reviewed all our mixes throughout the process, and uh, that was fantastic. I guess we only had 12 brass and 21 strings, so my numbers are off. So that's the production. Um, I want to dive in now for the rest of the talk. I'm going to talk about implementation because that's the real interesting story, I think, on this project, was going back to that slide where I said, you know, what are we going to do, do, do different? What's new? We wanted a more responsive and interactive Uncharted than we'd ever had before. 